today I'm going to talk about pattern 7, chapter 7 in the Books Point Lace workbook and some of the techniques that it, this uses. The pattern builds on many of the techniques you've already covered if you're working through this, this book but I'm going to cover the start, the false picots and a little bit back gimps. There's one or two little bits in this pattern that are slightly different to what you've worked before. This is the finished piece of lace. We're going to start at the top of the bookmark with three false picots. We're going to work a little bit of ground here and then put gimps in which actually cross in the middle with the two workers joining and then work some fingers in gimp as well. It's quite a nice little bookmark to work. You could also work it with a straight edge which I've covered in another video with a change of worker edge foot side edge on both sides and this you could quite easily if you started it on a straight top make it into an insertion if you want something pretty to add into a, a garment or a piece of cloth and fill fill it with a piece of books point it's a nice pattern to work and hopefully you'll enjoy it as much as I did so starting with a false pico we hang two pairs of bobbins on the top pin in open formation and put five twists on one of the pairs and then work a cloth stitch. Tension it up making sure the twists go nicely around the pin and then do the same for the next pin to the right and to the left as well. This is giving you the start at a point and it makes a nice sharp point on the bookmark. Again five twists and a cloth stitch and tension it up and the same on the left now once we've got these in we're going to do the crossing as if it's a spider so we start in the middle and we take the pairs out that one hasn't tensioned quite enough, that's better. And this is the sort of um, start you make when you're doing a spider in other laces. So hopefully you will know by now how to work that. And that fills up the top space. We then put a pin between those two middle ones. And these two become your workers. So I cover the pin and the left one goes out to the left to do the next pico in a normal manner of working picots and back through. Now all of these pins on the inside of the trail on both sides need one pair of bobbins adding on at each one and this is to feed the point ground that's the first bit of the insertion or the bookmark and then it will feed into the cloth stitch for the actual shapes inside the gimp. So I'm now ready to add a pair on each side. So we'll do the left hand side first. Hang a pair on a temporary support pin and cloth stitch through it. Two twists up and put the pin up. This pair is now left out and it's going into point ground so it needs three twists on it. Now to do the pico again and back in and the next pair is added in. And I continue to do this all the way down here. Where it's coming out and going into the cloth stitch you will only need two twists but where it's coming into point ground you need three. And I'll just do that off camera just to get it set up. The other side is exactly the same adding one pair in at each, three twists into point ground, two into cloth. And once I've got that set up I'll then show you adding the gimp. I've now set up all of the pairs on the right hand side so I can show you what happens with the gimps. First of all I've got four point ground pins to work here. 
So they should all have three twists on and I'm going to work the point ground which is half stitch and two twists. And if you've been following the book this little bit of the pattern should be easy to you. Hopefully you've got a little bit of experience before tack tackling this pattern but hopefully also you will enjoy doing it at the same time. It's quite a straightforward pattern when you've got a few techniques on your belt. Okay, so we've now got the four point ground pins in and I'm going to put the gimps in. This pattern takes two gimps, it takes one for the right hand side and one for the left and they just join in the middle with a, a pin between the two gimps to hold them in place. Now traditionally the gimps would have been the same colour or same shade almost of the, the uh, thread that you're working it with. So I'm working here with white but for purposes of the video I'm going to put a coloured gimp in to hope, hopefully help you see it better. I say it's traditional to use the same coloured gimp but today we are tending more towards colour than ever before. So I've hung it on a temporary pin and I'm going to take the pairs through from the left of which there are three, pin, three pairs coming in. So I've found those three pairs, take them in through the gimp and put two twists after the gimp. And the same on the right of this left hand shape but the third one is where the worker joins. So I've only got two to take in at this stage. The two middle ones are going to do the cloth stitch for the top pin here. And on this pattern the worker always goes from the top pin towards the middle. So the left hand one on the left side is going to be the worker and I put two twists on. And tension it up and then cloth stitch through taking in the next pair. And then across to the left, taking in a pair from the left. And the pin up. And then back over towards the right. Now I've got to this point, I can't actually work that pin until I've done exactly the same on the right hand side. So again, I'm going to put the gimp on a temporary pin just to hold it in position while I get the pairs through it. Again, two from the left and two twists on and three from the right. And start again in the middle. This time the right hand one is going to be the worker because we're going to work to the left so that's the one that I put the twists on. Work across to the left of the shape, take a pair in, pin and go back. Exactly the same as we did on the first side. Now, we've got to the point where, where we're going to do this pin. The gimps have to cross, so that's left over the right. The two workers come out through the gimps, so two twists on each, and take the worker, the gimp through both workers, and twist again. Now this is an isolated honeycomb stitch, which is normally done as half stitch and twist, pin, half stitch and twist. But it is permissible in this case to use it as cloth stitch and twist because it is going to be pulling both of the pairs of bobbins for tensioning purposes. And if you use it as half stitch, it doesn't tension quite as nicely. So cloth stitch and twist and put the extra twist on to come back out. When you've done that, you need to cross the gimps again and this will give you a little ring 
around this pin that you've just completed. And then we can finish both pieces of cloth, left and right, to form this block. Taking the third pair in from the left, on the left hand side, and as soon as you've covered the pin, this pair is then left out. So two twists, it's going into point ground, and three twists after. I then finish the cloth stitch in the normal way, each time leaving a pair out at the pin. And keep tension it up, keep your tension nice. Out through the gimp and three twists. That one should have gone out through the gimp. Two twists before, three after into point ground, and down to the last pin. Cover the pin and they both go out again through the gimp. At this point, we'll cross as usual, ready for the next piece. So finish the other side in exactly the same way. First one's left out after that pin. I hope you can see this nice dark blue gimp. It's actually a variegated one I'm using. And it does give a little bit extra definition to the shape. But will give a very different look at the end of the bookmark as well. It's ideal to add a colour if you're doing it for a special occasion. It could be a bookmark for the Bible for a wedding, for instance, would make nice if you put a, a sparkly gimp in, maybe. Or if you were doing it for a golden wedding anniversary, something of that nature, and pick an appropriate coloured gimp for the occasion. So again, I'm down to the bottom pin, put the twists on, take the gimps through both sides, cross the gimps, and it's ready then for the next bit. The middle piece is just purely point ground, so there's nothing too difficult there. And I'll just go on and show you the fingers and gimp. So on here we have three pin holes, the three in point ground, before we work the fingers. And these are taking the pairs that I've added in on the, the, the edge, when I was doing the edge trail. Now, I've taken that in, and if you look at the pattern, you can actually see this gimp now comes back uphill. Gimps are about the only thing that can travel uphill to this point here, and then you'll have one pair coming off the head side, off the edge trail, into this pinhole. Take the gimp through. This is the one that's going to work the pinhole, and another one off the edge. The two pairs come in and put the twists on. Now you'll note I haven't twisted the other pairs because the gimp is coming back down that line in a moment. Pins inside gimp like this are isolated honeycomb and worked half stitch and twist, pin, half stitch and twist. Now the gimp comes back through, that's going to work a point ground outside so that can have three twists. This one again here we'll have three twists. This pair's coming in. Now where the gimps are lying 
parallel to each other here. I don't want twists between them because this will create space. And I want those gimps to lie close, so that's why I haven't put any twists on. When I'm doing fingers in gimp, I don't tend to twist until I actually know I need the twists in there. Otherwise you spend quite a lot of time undoing twists. Now on this bit you have to watch where the gimp is actually going because it's done the isolated honeycomb. You've got one other pin there to work and then the gimp will come back through for this next isolated honeycomb. You've got one pin here to work before that though. And it's a case of really watching where these gimp lines go can be a little bit tricky at times and no prizes for spotting the mistake in the book where I didn't watch what I was doing and so made a mistake. So this is now coming back through to this pin here with the last one from the edge trail. Isolated honeycomb again and pin up. That one's taken out. That is definitely going into point ground so I can put the twists on. This one's coming through. This one's coming right the way up here into this pin at the top of this line. And they can all now have the twists on because they're all going to work point ground outside the gimp. And before I can work that one, there's another one in there, look, to work. Two, one from either side of it, and that will feed down that line, and this one as well. You do have to keep watching, make sure you're working diagonally downhill each time, and taking a pair from either side of the pin. Now that's ready to come out and do that last finger now. So take the gimp through. These two, one either side of the pin, are going to work the isolated honeycomb. So that's dropping out into point ground. And that one is as well. Now before we do this we've got one pinhole left in here which because I haven't worked the point ground above it I can't do. I need to go and do that first. Ideally I would have worked this point ground before I started the fingers in gimps. Try and work everything up to a feature and then you get more of a straight run at it and less likely to get lost in the process. Okay, so this one's now coming in, and again it's inside gimp, so it's an isolated honeycomb. This one is now going out for that line of point ground. That one is going back into the point ground in the centre, and the gimps will cross for the top of the cloth stitch on the next repeat. And there's just one other thing to show you on this pattern, which only occurs at the next pin on the edge, both sides. And that is where you have to use a pin twice, because of the change of angle of the edge trails. So I've worked that there, and that's quite nicely worked and all ready to go. On the edge, I've just done the last pico on the diagonal, and I'm coming in to work this inside pin here. I need to add one pair to come out into the ground but because I'm going to use it twice I'm just going to put the pin in for the first time, come out to work the pico and then I'll go back 
and add the pair on the second time of using the pinhole. So I'll put the next pair on a temporary pin as usual. And I'll work through it. Now when I remove the pin that is here already, I just take it underneath and put it back in the same hole, not trying to catch the loop, and I hold the first passive as I tension it up. And this will allow the loop to disappear, but without distorting the trail. I cover the pin and that pair is now left out for the point ground. And then you're working back in the normal manner, zigzagging on this trail edge. The fingers and gimps work the same both sides and that is the only slightly diff different piece of, of technique on this using this pin twice. Whenever you do it, don't try and catch the loop, just hold the first passive to pull it up. I hope that's been helpful in getting you started on pattern 7. Let me know any feedback you've got, anything you want to see in the future and thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up and I noti tick the notifications and you'll hear of more videos coming soon. Thanks for watching.